Welcome to our second lesson in our Python um, Turtle tutorials here. Um, in this lesson, you're going to learn about iteration, or in other words, you're going to learn how to do more things in code using less lines. So to start off with, we're just going to have here um, our iteration um, program. Right here. So we know that's a comment up there, and remember from last time that we would print a comment. We can send it to the terminal. Um, so we can do this, for example. We can print it and send it to the terminal. And what we've been doing at this stage is we've just been doing one command after another command after another command. So for example, if I wanted to say hello to six people here, I could copy that down six times and I could change each one and right as if I run that it should come through and just say I want to save it let's save it into the right place desktop in my Python turtle folder and remember this is lesson one a lesson two, cute two, uh, cute one, done. So if I run that, and it'll just go through and it'll run each individual line. It'll do this, put it down there, do this, put it down there, do this, put it down there, all the way along. And if I move those around, for example, if I take Ben from here and put him to the top, and I run that, then you can see it changes down there. Now, this is called sequential arm commands. Okay, so sequential, so running your commands in a sequence. That's going to put it there. So sequential, so I'm running commands in a, in a sequence and it goes along and it just does one line after the other. And that is the default um, way the programs will just go. It just go one line to another, to another, to another. Unless you do things like put a control function in, which we're going to learn about a control structure in. We're going to learn about that in this lesson. So this is okay, but what starts happening if you start having like a large number of files? Let's just say, instead of just printing out six students, I need to print out, oh, I don't know, maybe the, the whole school. So that's 500 students' names. Does that mean I'm going to have to type it out 500 times, each line um, 500 times? Or what happens then if I wanted to go back and I have typed it out 500 times and I decide instead of saying hello, I want to say good morning. Does that mean I need to go through um, 500 times and get rid of each of those greetings and make it say good morning 500 times? So you can see the whole sequential programming stuff, while it records it and keeps it and it can run it over and over again, it's not really what you would call scalable. It doesn't work for large numbers and has a whole lot of problems with updating issues, as in changing the values in there. So we are not going to keep using that. We're going to use something different. Situation here, we've got repetition. I just deleted a whole lot of the repetition there. We've got repetition, and so we need to know how to actually deal with that. So we're going from sequential to iteration. So in, in Python, iteration is often referred to as loops. So it loops around. And there's a number of different control structures that can be used for loops. But the one we're going to use in this lesson is a thing called the for loop. Right, now all automatically we can see it's orange. So it's something important. Okay, a for loop is, a, is an official command um, control structure within Python. And it has a particular orange color to it in this particular um, style that lets you know what it is. So I'm going to change this now. Instead of saying, instead of printing each one of these out, I'm going to just make a list of names, right? And in Python, to make a list, just open a bracket up and then you can just type in what you want in that list. So I'm just going to actually save you having to watch me type something out. I'm just going to cut and paste this in. So you can see here, I've got a list, and we've got one, two, three, four, five names. Who am I missing? Uh, Hunter, Geordie, Adam, Jesse. We're missing Jesse. Let's put Jesse in there as well, too. Rightio. Rightio. So we've got the, for the six names in there. And now instead of going through and saying, okay, um, 
Good morning, each individual one of those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this four structure to loop through and have a look at each one of these. So let's start. First off, I've got to give a label to what they're actually using to, to loop through. So I'm going to say name. For name in names that. Okay, there's a lot of things happening there. First off, this tells Python that this is going to be a control structure called a for loop. Name is the label that we give, which is a temporary label, which will um, be where we store each element that we read out of this list. So the first time through, name will be Hunter. Second time through, name will be Geordie, and then Adam and Jesse and Bryce and Ben, and so forth. So names is the list that it's pulling, that it's actually checking for. It's looking for here. And then finally, the colon. Now, the, what the colon does, if you see if I press enter here, it automatically indents. And what it's saying is that this command structure is related to everything indented underneath here. So in this case, a for loop, it says, I want you to loop that command each time. So I want you to repeat that command each time. Now, instead of saying good morning hunter, I'm going to get rid of the hunter here. And I'm going to go comma and just say name. So here we go. Prediction. I want you to predict what do you think is actually going to happen if I run this command here. What do you think is going to do if I run it? So um, think about that. Holding your mind. And now let's run it and have a look. And look at that. It goes through and it looks at all of those values here. And we have the names being printed out. Right here, how does that work? How does it work? Well, I'm gonna introduce you to something here called debugging. See this little thing here, it's a bug. And debugging is a way you can actually step through your program step by step, and you can see each stage of the program. I've also turned on over here the variable. You see this? So I just went um, view, and I've turned variable on so we can see the values of the variables, or the various labels that we have here. Right, so I'm just gonna start the debugging by clicking on that, and you can see the program has now started. You can see it skips our comments, as we know, and it gets to the very first line, the very first code line, which is line four. And it says right here, at the moment, names equals all these. So I'm just going to what's called progress or step into this, um, which goes to the next step and the next step. So I'm just going to do that. So it says, all right, I've got a list here. And in this list, let me see what I can find. In this list, I can find one, two, three, four, five, six names. And those six names are in a list, and um, those list is going to be given the label names. And you can see over here, the actual variable, well, label names, has that value in it. It says this is actually what's in what we call names, the variable names. Now it comes down to the for loop, and see, it automatically recognizes this entire indentation as part of the for command. Right, so I'm just going to step into it. And he goes, oh, there's names here. Now, I've seen names before. I know I've got stuff saved in names. As over here, I've got these values. So I'm going to replace names with those values. There they are. They've been replaced. Awesome. So now, within the, again, within this bracket, you can see the, the, the box around here saying this is all this particular structure. So now, what does it do? It gets there, and it says, right. So the name is now going to be taken to the first one, which is Hunter. And the it's going to hunt is going to be put into the label, the variable name. So I'm just going to step into that. We we'll see over here currently now the name is Hunter. Right here. And then what does it do? It comes down to here. It says right. I need to print this, and I need to print all of that. And I need to say good morning. That's fine. That's a statement. And then I need to replace that with Hunter. And then you look down the bottom, and when I run the next step, it's going to say good morning Hunter. Radio, it's fine. There's a none there, doesn't really matter. Go to the next one. And this says, okay, I've now moved on to the next item in the list, which is Geordie. Again, gonna go through. I'm going to replace name with Geordie, and then I'm going to run and say good morning, Geordie. And I'm just gonna step it through the rest of these really quickly. Jesse. Bryce. And last one is Ben. Right, now it gets to this point here and it's got to the end of the list. So when I press this, what it actually does is it comes back and says, is there anything left in this list? And if not, it just exit. It just finishes off because there's nothing else in the code. So I'm gonna step through, it's finished up and it's printed through. So that's how a for loop works. 
as such. It goes through, runs through the list, and then takes each item in turn, and then loops it through and includes it in whatever is the block in here. That's what gets repeated. So let's look into that block a bit more. I'm just gonna add something here. I'm going to say, um, good morning. I'm gonna say print. And I'm gonna say, how are you? Rightio, so again, I want you to predict. I want you to sit there and say, what do you think is gonna happen when I press play here? Um, so hold that in your mind, have a picture, kind of make a commitment, write it down somewhere, say, okay, this is what I think is gonna happen. All right, ready to go, and we're gonna run that. Rightio, and you look here at the actual code, and you can see, well, what it's doing is it's come in here, and it's taking the first one, Hunter, and it says the name, so it says, good morning, Hunter, and then it says this one as well, how are you? And then it repeats. And the reason it's repeating there is because this is indented as well. So this indentation on both lines seven and eight tells that this is all to be looped within the for loop control structure. Okay, that's what those column means there. So let's take it a little bit further. What happens now if I say this? Okay, so I'm now putting that there. Again, I want you to predict what's going to happen. Let's predict that, see what's going to happen. You're ready to go, and let's run. Okay, so we can see once again, this is repeating here. So hello, good morning, Hunter, good morning, Geordie, how are you? Adam, Jesse, Bryce, Ben, right? And then it comes down and it says, please come in, and it only says it once. Because you see the indentation here has been taken away. So this for loop says repeat whatever is indented after this colon. That's the stuff that's indented after that colon, radio. And then when it's finished repeating, it then exits back out to this level of indentation, the top level, and then runs that line of code. So if you want, um, have a crack and actually try debugging yourself. Go through and run through debugging this one, click on it and then go F7 and work your way through um, and see how it actually works in operating that one. So that is it, understanding how, um, how loops work. Now, again, this is a small example. You've got like six people there. But like if you were doing code for the school where you've got 500 names there, or if you were doing code for, uh, um, for N um, NBA, National, sorry, NAB, the National Australia Bank, and you've got literally millions of customers, then you don't want to have to write millions of lines of code. And then again, having to change good morning to hello and do that a million different times. So this is the power of um, iteration. This is how you can write, get your program to do more using less lines of code. So, um, and the important thing is removing or the re repetition of your code. And there's a little principle in programming we call, which is dry, which is do not repeat yourself. If there's any way possible to remove repetitive code, then that is much better off. It's a much healthier and, and happier and more efficient and effective code. So there we are. That's our first tutorial for this lesson here.